mafia chain swinging, clang clang, and it costs a lot. Bitch, I'm always at the gala, yeah, and you are not bad as beat. Keep on going till you hit the spot. Whoa, I'm a big bag hunter with the What's up guys, today I'm going to be showing you how I created more of these creative transitions and effects. First up we have this eye glow transition. Here is a raw video clip that I started off with. So the first thing I need to do is copy and paste the layer. So hold down option and click and drag the video clip up. I don't need all of this video clip so I'm just going to trim the first part of it. And now I need to mask out the eyes. For this you could either use the draw mask effect, I'm going to use the mroto AI effect. So once we've added the effect, we just need to click and paint on the video what we want to mask out. And then click the tracker button and just track this mask. So over here in the settings, let's go to output, click mask video. So now if I disable the video clip underneath, you'll see that we're just left with the eyes here. Now I need to add a few effects to this. First effect I'm going to use is this neon outline effect and set the position to zero and we can change the color on this too. Next I'll add a light ray effect. I've shown how to create these light ray effects before, but I'm just going to use a preset. You can find these presets linked in my description. Okay, so now we have the light ray effect added. I'm going to cut the bottom clip so we're just left with this kind of, with this effect here. On this bottom video clip here, I'm going to add a transition. So over here my transitions tab, and I used a glitch transition and if I just double click, it adds the transition onto there. So now the video clip glitches on and on the glowing eyes effect, I'm just going to add a cross dissolve transition to the start to fade it on. And then also at the end, press command T and to add a cross dissolve. And that would just fade the effect off like that. I also split the beginning of the eyes. And on the first half, I added a flicker effect. So I added this random flicker effect to the start. So the eyes sort of flickered onto the screen. Now we have that, we can select it all and drag it up above the video clip that we want to transition from. To animate the eye on this painting, all I did was copy and pasted the video clip. So hold down option and click and drag up. And on this layer, I'm going to mask out the eye. Let's add a draw mask effect onto this and just create a mask around the eye here. Go up to the transform tools and hit the keyframe button on position, scale and rotation. And then also control points, move forward a few frames, make sure this mask sticks around the eye and copy and paste this layer. And on the top layer, let's invert the mask up here. And then I'm going to create another layer of this top one. So hold down shift and press B. And on this middle layer here, if we go to the transform tool and just move it, you can see how we can create this wink effect. So all we need to do is go to the beginning, add a keyframe at the start, and then also at the end. And then in the middle, we can move this video clip down. And if I play that back, you see we created this like wink effect. If the wink is too slow or too quick, then we can right click on this video, go to show video animation and underneath transform, we have the keyframes we made here and we can just move them closer together and it will create a quicker wink. Next up, we have this flower pot just popping into the screen. So first thing we need to do is copy and paste this video clip and right on the very first frame, let's hold down shift and press H. This will create this freeze frame here. And we can make the freeze frame longer if we want by just dragging this tab out. And let's trim the end of this. So hold down option and then right bracket to trim it. And then let's bring this back here. Now I need to remove the background. To mask this, it's going to be very detailed. So sometimes what I like to do is screenshot the page. So hold down shift, command and press free on the keyboard. And just save the screenshot to my desktop. And then I can open up this screenshot in preview and select the screen, press command K to crop it. And if we go to tools here, we can remove the background. So now you see we've really quickly removed the background on this. So if I press command S to save that and just drag that into my timeline and extend this. Now I have this freeze frame of the flower pot. I just need to scale it down and make sure it lines up with the original one in the video. Now we can delete that video clip underneath and we're just left with this. 
from here, I cut up the different parts of the flower, add the draw mask effect onto this. Now I'm just going to cut out the different parts and I'll just repeat this process until I have it all cut out into different layers. What I want to do is keyframe them so that they start behind the plant pot. So now we have all of the layers coming out like this. I'm going to use the Smooth Camera Zooms plugin to add a zoom in effect to this. Now I can select all of these and right click, put them into a compound clip. I'm just going to add a sharpen effect onto this because it's quite blurry. And then I'm also going to add a mask glow effect onto this to give it that cool like glowing outline effect. From here, we can retime this as well to create a faster animation. I'm also going to keyframe the start of it from zero to a hundred so that it comes on from the back of the screen. Now what I can do is drag this over my video clip. So now we have that coming onto the screen and transitioning into the next video clip. I'm also going to create a layer for these beams and table here and transition them onto the screen. So for that, let's copy and paste the video clip, create a freeze frame on the first frame, hold down shift and press H and just trim off the end, add the draw mask effect onto the freeze frame and just cut around the bit that you want to transition onto the screen. Then let's go to the transform tool over here and select crop Ken burns. And then we can drag the start box up to the top of the screen or the bottom, depending on which way you want them to come onto the screen. Now we can drag that freeze frame over the top here and trimming it down will change the speed of how it comes onto the screen. Now I'm just going to add a shake effect to tie this all together. So if I go to my adjustment layer and add an adjustment layer over the top of this, Adjustment layers don't come with Final Cut Pro, but it's a free plugin which you can download. I'll leave the link in the description. Just allows you to add effects onto the layers underneath. Next, I'm going to add a shake effect to this. So I'm going to use one of my presets. I've also updated it with a new flash hit shake preset. So if you have this pack already, you can download it again to get the update. On the settings here, we can change all of the settings on the shake, including the flash amount, fully customizable. To finish this off, I'm going to add some motion blur over the top of this. So now we have that nice transition. After this type of transition, I like to add a speed ramp. I'm going to press R on my keyboard and just select the bit that I want to speed up. From here, we can go to the speed wheel here and go to fast times 20 and just extend these tabs to create a nice smooth speed ramp. So now that speeds up into the wide shot. For the next transition, we have this zoom out transition through a part of the house. So here I have the next video clip that I want to transition to. The first thing I'm going to do is copy and paste it. On this top video clip, I'm going to select it, hold down shift and press H at the start of it to create this freeze frame and just trim the end of it and bring it to the front of the video clip underneath. Now on this freeze frame, I can go to my effects tab Go to mask and keying and add the draw mask effect onto this and just cut around the part that you want to zoom through just like that. And then up here, let's click invert mask and then go to the crop tool here and select crop, go to Ken Burns, switch the end box, the full video and the start box. Let's make really small and put it inside of the mask we just made. Now that should zoom out from the mask if we right click. Just want to make sure ease in is selected. Now we can copy and paste this on the bottom layer. Let's go to the crop tool and just move the start box up to the top, just above the mask. And then on the draw mask effect, let's click invert mask. Now that part of the video will slide up. And if you want to make it a quicker transition, just cut this down and that will speed up the transition. Now we can drag this over the previous video clip. So now we have that zoom out transition. We can also add a zoom out to the bottom video clip. So if we trim the end of the bottom video clip, select it, go to the crop tool, go to the Ken Burns effect. And if we zoom out and make the end box nice and big, right click, make sure ease out is selected. Now this video clip will zoom out with the transition. Next, I added a boomerang effect to this video clip. So this shot, we have a nice gimbal shot focusing on the front of the house and just going from one side of the house to the other side. 
So to create this boomerang effect, I'm just going to press R on my keyboard and select most of the middle of the video clip whilst leaving a little bit on the end. And then we can go to the speed wheel, go to fast times 20, just as a starting speed. Now, if I zoom in, we can drag out these tabs here to smooth it out. And you can also change the speed by clicking on this part here to speed it up or slow it down. And then to create the boomerang effect, let's just trim this end part and then copy and paste the video, right click and turn this into a compound clip, select it. And let's go to the speed wheel here and just select reverse video clip. So now that will create this boomerang effect. And then I also just copy and pasted the previous transition that I made and dragged it over to the end of this video clip, right click, and I added it into a compound clip and then just reversed it. And then that just created this zoom in through the house again. I just basically used the same transition. Moving on to the last couple of shots in this edit, all I did with these is just use nice camera movement and speed ramping. So the first shot here, I walked straight forward with the gimbal and used the spin effect of the gimbal to create this nice rotating effect. And then all I did was added a speed ramp to emphasize the rotating effect. So if we select the middle portion here and then press shift and N to add two speed ramps. From here, we can speed up the beginning and also speed up the end. There's not a perfect speed for this because it all depends on your shot and how quick you're moving the camera. You just have to speed it up and then figure out what looks best. If we double click on the speed ramps, we can change where they are. So if we click edit here, we can change where the speed ramp is. Once the speed ramp is done, then I can drag this underneath the previous video clip and it will transition into that shot. I also did the same on this final video clip. I started off with the gimbal tilted in one direction, walking around the table. And then right here, I switched the angle of the gimbal, walked around the other part of the table, and then just panned down at the end. So I'm going to add a few speed ramps here. I'm going to add two here, and then also two here. And just speed up the beginning, middle, and end. And then make sure to drag these tabs out to make it nice and smooth. And then also adding stabilization helps with these movements to smooth it out. We can also select the video clip, go to the speed wheel here and go to video quality and select better optical flow. Sometimes this will help and make the video clip a bit smoother. So yeah, that's looking much better now. To finish this video off, what I did was added some color grade and some final effects. To do that, what I usually do is add an adjustment layer over the whole project. If we go up to titles, go to adjustment layer. I'll leave the link to this plugin in the description. It's a free plugin that you can download. Up here on the T, we can add in a color grading LUT. If you don't have this, then just download the adjustment layer again using the link in the description. For this project, I use a DJI LUT to give it like a base color grade. And I'll leave this linked in the description. You can download it from the DJI website. And then for the colors, I used the orange dolphin preset and just set this to around like 14% to give it more of like a summary sort of look. And then I also added a cinematic glow effect onto this. This effect just adds a nice little glow effect to the highlights. And then I also added a sharpen effect. And this is really good if you're uploading to like social media because it makes the video stand out and look a lot more crisp. And then finally, I like to add RSMB to add more motion blur to all of the effects and transitions. This is a really expensive plugin, but I really like how it makes all the effects and transitions look. So I'll leave a link to it in the description. Once I've added all of the color and effects, I then go through the video clips individually. I'll open up the color board and also open up the histogram. So if I press command seven, command seven will bring up the waveform and if we click here and go to histogram then we can use this histogram to make sure the exposure isn't too low or too high if i turn up the highlights here you can see how it spikes at the end and you basically want it between like 100 and zero and yeah that's pretty much it for this video i'll leave the link to all the plugins and effects and color grading luts that i used in the description i hope you guys enjoyed this video subscribe if you liked it and i'll see you in the next one